Now then, Miss Navia, who is the person you would like to charge instead? That person is... Marcel, the head of Confrérie of Cabriere! Please let me remind you, Miss Navia, that charging someone is an incredibly serious matter. Committing to the charge also means taking on the legal responsibilities associated with it. And if the charge fails, depending on the circumstances, you may also be charged with the crime of making a false accusation. Knowing this, do you still wish to charge this man? Yes, I do. In that case, I declare the charge to be valid. Miss Navia and attorneys, please take your places on the court. Members of the guards, please contact Mr. Marcel right away so that he may stand trial. After some time, a shock and confusion are brought to the stand. Mr. Marcel, you will not require an attorney, is that correct? Ah, apologies, sir. It all just happens so quickly. I still haven't figured out what's going on. I think an attorney won't be necessary. This is probably just a misunderstanding between me and Navia. Very well. In that case, since both sides have I now hope arrived, I pick the Ms. Right Navia, person. please present your charges. I would like to take everyone back to three years ago, to the case of Callus the Unfaithful. Only through elucidating what really happened in that case can we connect all the dots for the serial disappearances case. Navia, do you really think that I was the one who killed your father? Come on, why would I do that? Callus was my benefactor, and remember both you and I only ran to the scene when we heard the sound of a gun. If that's enough to make me a suspect, wouldn't that make everyone at that banquet a suspect as well? I... Uh, I think there's no point in getting into the specifics right now. The audience doesn't even have the big picture yet. Even I'm... <laughs> struggling to remember some details of that case. Huh? Exactly correct, Your Honor. I must refresh everyone's memory about that case before I can explain my charge and reasoning. I see. In which case, I will recount the findings about that case as originally recorded by Maison Guardianage. Mm -hmm. On the day of the right. murder, Spina di Rosula hosted a large banquet in a countryside estate owned by the Confrérie of Cabriere. Mm -hmm. During the banquet, all attending guests heard two gunshots from the courtyard. When the guests arrived at the scene, they found the primary suspect, Callus, holding a gun, while his acquaintance Jacques lay dead from a gunshot wound. The guards' investigation did not recover any other firearms from the scene. As a result, they concluded that the suspect's first shot must have missed, while the second must have taken Jacques' life. Wait, investigators did not recover any other firearm from the scene as a result? Huh? The suspect did not dispute this conclusion, and also declined to defend himself in court. Instead, he chose to prove his innocence through a duel. Callus was defeated by champion duelist Clarand in the ensuing duel, and soon succumbed to the injuries. These are the known facts about the case. Mm. Huh. The one with the motive to kill was Jacques, not my father. And even so, Jacques still had no reason to pull the trigger. Uh, in truth, the third person shot Jacques first, and was shot in turn by my father when my father seized the gun from him. After that, the true culprit turned the third person into water, erasing all traces of him from the scene. <clears throat> Thank you for the summary, Your Honor. Of course, the guard's conclusion appeared quite sensible to us at the time. However, we should revisit the case now that we've gained new information about the abilities of water from the Primordial Sea. Wait, ah, I have to pick which one? Oh no. Uh, I defy loophole. A okay. pile of clothing was found at the scene. The guards once believed they were used by Jacques as a costume to disguise himself. 
But now, it is clear that the clothes were proof that there was a third person at the scene. And that they were turned into water after committing the murder. Since it was raining that day, the culprit was confident that they could use the rain to wash away all traces of their dissolved accomplice. family confirms that Jacques had thoughts of assassinating Callus when he set out for the banquet. However, in the end he reconsidered and instead shared everything with Callus, hoping to seek the latter's protection. Unfortunately for Jacques, the true culprit had already considered this possibility and had sent out another assassin. This assassin first shot Jacques, then turned to shoot Callus, only for Callus to wrestle the gun from him and kill him instead. Realizing this, the true culprit caused the hired assassin to dissolve into water, leading everyone to believe Callus was responsible for Jacques's murder. This is the true version of events. That's what happened. In evidence. Wait, you're telling me something as dangerous as water from the primordial sea has been used for all these years? What a great theory. It also explains Callus's and Jacques's respective motives. I guess they didn't shoot each other after all. Mr. Marcel, you are the one being charged with the crime. You should provide a rebuttal if you wish to prove your innocence. Ah, but I think I agree with everything Navia just said. In fact, there was nothing in her speech that directly implicated me. Uh, then, may I ask some questions? In my opinion, we primarily need to determine two things. One, right. do you have the evidence to back up your claims? <sighs> I'm afraid not. At least not at this very moment. Boo! <laughs> if you don't have any evidence, you should just go home! Quiet in the ordinance. Order in the court. I may not have the evidence with me, but I know where I could go to collect it. If we look up the deserted clothes against a record of people who went missing around the same time, we should be able to find a match. Considering the serial disappearances case, the guards probably kept careful records of all missing persons from around that time, regardless of age or gender. That makes sense to me. Monsieur Nouvellet, I would consider this to be a reasonable investigative direction. Huh. Why do I feel like Farina's acting a little differently today? Maybe hmm. she's scared of embarrassing herself again? Alternatively, she's become more diligent after charging an innocent citizen in the last trial. My second True. question has to do with the ensuing duel. If the truth is indeed as you described, then why didn't Mr. Callus explain himself in court? If he had testified that a person had been dissolved, he could have at least mounted a defense. I've thought about this too, and the answer is actually pretty simple. He felt there were things that were more important to him. The dissolving power of water from the primordial sea is an important secret for the true culprit of the serial disappearances case. My father could have exposed it for all to see, but he chose to take it to the grave. At that time, Spina di Rosula was in dire straits, and his reputation had already been shattered. He had no guarantee that going forward with the truth would allow the culprit to be brought to justice. What was certain, however, was that it would paint a gigantic target on my back. Boss once told me that Demoiselle had already been selected as the next target of the serial disappearances case. What? If the secret had gotten out, 
The culprit would have fought an all-out war with Espina right there and then. I wouldn't have been the only one in danger. All of us would have stood to lose our lives. Of course, the guards might eventually figure out the truth of the matter and determine that we were in the right. But what good would that do? How can a hollow verdict protect anyone? Had this opera house ever given my father any kind of confidence in its brand of justice, Spina di Rosula would have had no reason to exist. But by staying silent, we retain the ability to deter our opponents and continue the stalemate. I was able to become Spina di Rosula's president, which made me harder to target, as well as giving me more time to grow and learn. And once I have figured out the truth and stepped up to the challenge, I will do what this opera house cannot, and restore my father's truth and honor back to him. So, you mean to say, your father intended to die in the duelist's ring? That's right. Do you have any proof? Of course. All you need is to ask his opponent, Clorand. Uh. <laughs> I don't need your apology, your guilt, or your support from the shadows. You don't have to do anything for my sake. But since he entrusted his will to you, Clorand, you should tell us the truth about his sacrifice. Um, so, during the duel, did you believe that Callus was intending to die? Yes, I did. As a champion duelist, I fought many battles and taken a countless number of dishonored lives. In my line of work, I've seen all kinds of people give their all for the faintest hope to continue living. Some were determined, others passionate, and some even manic and twisted. Just one look and I can tell if a duelist is hoping to live or if they're looking to die. I hereby swear on my name and honor as a champion duelist that Mr. Callus never intended to leave the ring alive. <sighs> Since that's your testimony, I have no more questions. It appears there really are good grounds to reopen this case. I concur. However, Miss Navia, you still have not explained the link between your father's case and the serial disappearances case. Right? What she said was fascinating, but kind of beside the point. <laughs> Wait, weren't they just talking about the Serial Disappearances case? Of course, Your Honor. The two cases are connected via a matter of timing. In my father's case, the culprit intended to kill both Jacques and Callus. As a result, they planned to act after hearing two gunshots. And, at the end of Linny's trial, the culprit also only dissolved the victim in front of everyone because they realized they were at risk of being identified. The culprit could only time their actions so precisely if they were already at the scene. Coincidentally, Marcel attended both the banquet and the trial. So that's why you suspected me. <sighs> Even after hearing your reasoning, I still can't help but find it a little preposterous. I'm used to it, though. You've always been an impulsive and sentimental child, Navia. It's one of your most endearing traits. No need to appeal to pathos. I won't try to refute your points one by one, but even if everything you just said was true, can you prove that I was the only person present at both events? On top of that, does a person have to be physically present to control the timing? Can't someone remotely monitor the place? Uh... Oof. I don't know what she can say to that. Uh-oh. I know that even with that, you might still think you can reduce the list of suspects with some further investigations, until I'm the only one left on the list. Alas, who won't feel at least a little hurt by an accusation of murder from a girl you see as your own daughter? But if I were to dismiss this completely, you'd also think I'm not being considerate of your feelings. Ah well, let Uncle Marcel teach you another lesson. Do you know what the biggest flaw in your reasoning is? What is it? I suppose you're gonna tell me anyways. It's timing again. I'm a businessman by trade. From that standpoint, there's no reason for me to kidnap young women. It's a high-risk action with nothing to gain. In addition, I left my home in Snezhnaya when I was young to come to Poisson and work in some trade. My business only thrived when I received Callus' patronage. But the disappearances began before I ever stepped foot in Fontaine. I wish I would have known that then. 
Uh... I do apologize, Demoiselle. This was my mistake. Why are you... Why are you holding out more information, dude? No. It's not your fault. I'm sure he had come prepared. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Would you like to check the date of my first business license against the first known case of the serial disappearances? Uh... You can also take a look at my border entry records, or ask my friends and family when I left Snezhnaya for the first time. Could those records and testimonies do something to appease the unspeakable anguish in your heart? Oh, seems like she got the wrong guy. At this rate, Nadia will be convicted for falsely accusing him. I think you've done a superb job Traveler, of dissecting your father's feelings you? as he neared where the end me? of his life. But aren't you going against all of his wishes and expectations right now? Traveler, we, we need you to make an awesome appearance right now. It's like, I have the evidence. He wished for you to become more rational, collected, and conscientious, instead of dwelling only on your own feelings. Once you've learned to be more considerate of others' feelings, and to stop rushing headlong into things, you'd have met most of his expectations. This isn't just about me, and it never has been. The biggest difference between me and the rest of the victims is that I still have the ability to search for the truth, while that same agency has long been taken from then. The people whose families were destroyed by synth abuse, the people who lost their loved ones to the serial disappearances, and the people who suffered tragic ends due to their sense of justice. Many people's images are flashing before my eyes. I'm sure some are coming to those of you in the audience as well. And whose image do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? <laughs> Wait, did I get the right guy? How he just acted just now, or not acted, but reacted. Oh, so you do know that name. <laughs> I'm merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that. A little while earlier at the entrance of the Sepulchres. I am butchering those names. These names are hard to say. <laughs> Whew. After all that, we finally made it to the innermost sanctum. Yep. Though, as expected, the mastermind isn't here. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, he've been charged by Nave as we speak. Ah, that's right. Then let's hurry up and find some evidence so we can get back to the Opera House and help Navia. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Anything here? What's all this? Ah, oh, it's a bunch of really cute things. Pink accessories, a hair tie, a necklace, even a makeup box. What? Why is this all here? Oh, Paimon sees it too, but why are all these cute things labeled with different girls' names? <gasps> why has... Is this like a souvenir for the killer to have mementos of the victims he killed? So he can, like, relive the moment he killed them? Huh? You mean the girls from the serial disappearances? They were brought here? And then... They were turned into water. And all the boxes of things... These names... That means... Oh, this is terrible! That is... So this is the water? Alright. So this must be What's the this over table. Here? They made Looks the, like some kind of place for research. The Perola Sea Water. Experiment problem. number 16 aims to verify Jacob Ingold's research conclusions on the primordial sea. 
and use his theory as a foundation to achieve a breakthrough. The experiment was a failure. No individual managed to resurface from the water from the primordial sea. Female specimens 22, 23, and 24 were dissolved! It's okay, Grandma. It is okay. Calm down. It's okay. Sorry, Traveler. Paimon will try her best. It's just that Paimon's never read something so scary before. How could someone write something that terrible in such a matter-of-fact tone? You read the rest. Paimon's too scared to keep going. Okay, Paimon, okay. The goal of the research. So that's why he did all of these experiments. But did he really think he'd be able to find a way just by dissolving people over and over? That's just insane! Uh... Valjola? Huh? Is it that the name you heard by the fountain? Paimon thought he was an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. He is the researcher. <sighs> you mean Vache is the one who did all of these... Uh, experiments? Oh. Yes, he is signed off on a bunch of the experiments reports. The voice I heard from the fountain were probably... Bache. So that's it! Bache was no victim, but personally took his lover and... No, that's not it either! If that's the case, why would he want people to resurface from the water? There must be more to this than meets the eye. What if that's the... Okay, what if... When we had that little meeting with that person in that fountain, that was the first victim when they said there were, before their eyes were closed and everything, the first per they, the person they see was Vache. What if they had a little accident, discovered the promoted sea water, discovered it? They didn't know nothing about it. And she ended up accidentally falling in there. And of course, him being shocked and everything, hoping that she would resurface, she never did. And he saw that she was like dissolved, gone, vanished. The water took her. What if this drove him to try to find a way to bring her back try to find a way for people to survive this but in the cruelest way possible in any case Paimon will write it all down alright where's the there's gotta be another evidence okay over here Let's see what's written here. Nothing escapes Detective Paimon's eyes. All right, go for it, Paimon. <sighs> Callus, Navia's father. Oh, this seems to be an investigation report on him. It's probably the results to his uh, <sighs> case. <sighs> yep. It's about finding someone to assassinate Jacques and Callus because of a lack of confidence that Jacques himself would go through with it! This mm. should prove the existence of the third person, right? Yup, and I was right. Hmm. On that part. We still have not determined the exact content of the key information Callus has passed on to certain members of his organization. The old dog's a real menace to deal with. Even if he abides by the promise he's made to us, he will still have the upper hand. He can act whenever he wants to make our lives miserable. The only option left is to remove him from the picture entirely. I concur. Let's send someone to kill him. He won't declare war as long as we don't touch Navia. Oh, seems like we've got a bunch of correspondence between the higher-ups. Hmm. They plan this... Well, in advance. <laughs> They're all just so evil! Let's 
Is that it? Is that all the evidence we got here? There's gotta be more. Oh. Oh, look! There's an important looking basin over here! And it's full of water! Must be the water from the Primordial Sea. That means this is where they make all the synth! And that special water is the main ingredient! If you dilute it with normal water, you'll get synth, but the pure stuff can dissolve a human! Paimon will take notes on this incriminating evidence! Alright, any more evidence? Or is that... Because we can't go back... Oh! Oh, that's to the table. Oh! Okay, here we go. Whoa! There's so much synth here! And so many bottles of ingredients that probably just contain the waters of the primordial sea. Hmm... Mixing in progress... Ready to drink... Stock sample? Huh! They've also got all the synth pretty clearly labeled. Yeah, Whoa, pretty organized. There's even fruit flavored synth? <gasps> the drink! Well, that definitely proves that this... Is where the formula Sith this. Yep, it's super obvious. We've looked at almost everything here, and it seems like our theories were spot on. But who really is Vashe? Yeah, we haven't found anything that reveals his true identity. No wonder even Nervalet wasn't able to find anything. Whoever it is probably destroyed everything to do with that name a long time ago. That way, even if we bring all this back to the opera, we won't be able to identify the true culprit. Hmm. But maybe not clever enough. Let's look again. Sure thing. Paimon won't admit defeat to this guy either. Let's watch the dramatic music. <gasps> what? Why did the dramatic music popped up? Gotta be something. You take that side, and Paimon will take this side. Check everything carefully. We'll find something for sure. I thought I, already, I know I already clicked this. Do I have to click it again? Ugh. Nothing at all! And Paimon can't even find snacks either! How could you think of eating at a time like this? Whoa, really? Let Paimon see! Vignere. Isn't that Vashe's lover's name? Then... You found her diary! Aww... It's just a normal diary chronicling their love story. She was so sweet, too. Oh, Paimon feels even worse for her now. Take a look at this page. So many! A whole page is worth! But they're all crossed out. Was she unhappy with all of them? The final name she decided on was... Marcel! Wait, but... Marcel's pretty old! <gasps> Has this case been going on for so long that he's Bache and Veneer's grown son? Oh. Still hasn't figured it out yet. After attaining the final piece of key evidence, you race back to the opera Evicleless. Whose image do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? I still can't believe I got the... the person right. Huh. <sighs> oh, 
So you do know that name. I... Merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that. Navia! We're back! Ugh, as expected of my partner. I just knew you'd return in the nick of time. Just how often do you intend to flout the rules of this court? Sorry, Miss Nervalette. It's all right, Monsieur Nervalette. Given their confidence, I expect they've found the crucial evidence. Yes, we did, and more. You say you're never heard of Vachel? Uh... This one? But the truth of it, Marcel, is that you've always been Vache. Huh? We've investigated your lair and we already know everything! After your lover, Veneer, was dissolved, you kept abducting young women to experiment on the hopes of bringing her back to you! You even created Marcel as a new identity and destroyed all records of your past as Vache! So that's it. Even the villains in opera performances rarely go that far. And with that, Marcel's motive has now been established. This information regarding your past also dismantles your prior timing defense. Well, Marcel, do you know where you went wrong? <sighs> you fixated your gaze on the lover that passed away, instead of paying attention to the living people around you. So, you never noticed how we changed, or how we grew as individuals. You also never understood Boss's real expectations for his daughter. Or our determination to see things through. Your determination? <laughs> Mr. Marcel, please speak up now if you would like to defend yourself. Otherwise, the trial will move on to the next stage. Do you think... Do you really think I wanted to do any of this? Pay attention to you? <laughs> what for? Have you ever paid attention to me? Ever empathized with my pain? Ever known how it feels to watch the love of your life dissolve right in front of your eyes? No one helped me. No one even believed me. All those decades ago, even the officers from the Maison Guardianage were laughing at me. They said there's no way a human being can turn into water. So I must have gone mad from grief. Vinyar's death was brushed away by all of you as if it didn't matter at all. Well, now you know, don't you? Ha! Well, it's too late now. All those who were dissolved are gone forever. You only have yourselves to blame. You set up this ornate opera house in pursuit of your so-called justice. Your beloved drama while turning a blind eye to the suffering of the people. Vinyar is dead. We promised each other that we would always be together. Wherever she goes, I will follow. But I'm not from this blasted place, so I can't be dissolved, no matter what I do. Dude, don't, no, dude! Hey. Is that water from the primordial sea that he's drinking? No! I can't dissolve! Can't dissolve! Wait, can't what? dissolve! <laughs> Do you all see? I can't go! I can't follow! So if I can't go where she is, what choice do I have but to try to bring her back? Oh, because he's not born from... Because he was not born in the country of Fontaine. He was... If I remember correctly, snitch Naya, he said. So he met her, because she was probably Fontaine, he was probably from since Naya. And since she was born in Fontaine, she can dissolve in the promoted sea water, but he can't. I did all of that, and in the end, that accursed callus still got the better of me. I spent my entire life living on pins and needles, only to get stabbed by his idiot daughter at the very end. Hey! 
The suspect is exhibiting signs of mental distress. Guards, please restrain him. Don't touch me! Don't anybody come near me! Oh, jeez. I still need to save Lin Ye. Her promise. We made a promise. Lin Ye. Lin Ye. Please, Vin Yeah, don't think badly of me. All I want to do is fulfill our promise. At this point, the verdict of this trial is clear. With Mr. Marcel's conviction, the charges against Mr. Tartaglia no longer have any basis. Fine by me. I was in a bad mood, but after a show like that, I'm actually feeling pretty good. Traveler. Please submit all the evidence you have collected to the guards, so that I might review and summarize the truth behind the serial disappearances case. The man now known as Marcel was originally named Varche, and worked as an adventurer with his partner and lover, Vignier. Oh, okay, so he was a venturer from the beginning. During an underwater expedition, Vignier accidentally came into contact with water from the Primordial Sea, and was dissolved in front of Vache as a result. Vache learned of the primordial water's existence through the work of others and began to kidnap young women for research with the goal of discovering a method to restore Vignier back to life. To cover his tracks, he invented the new alias of Marcel and began to operate a business in Poisson. During the course of his research, Vache discovered that a diluted concoction of water from the primordial sea can induce feelings of euphoria and began to manufacture and market synth. However, as he accumulated wealth to fund his continued research and expanded the scope, he came into conflict with Spina di Rasula. After exchanging blows with Spina di Rasula for many years, Vache decided to assassinate their president, Callus, at a banquet. Although the assassination did not go as Vache expected, he was able to turn Callus into the murder suspect by dissolving the assassin he sent to the scene. And just recently, Vache attempted to frame Linny as the culprit of the serial disappearances case using a similar method. However, his attempt to frame Linny failed, and the power of water from the primordial sea became public knowledge. This case also exposed enough of Vache's machinations that he was eventually successfully charged in court. Thus concludes the enigmatic history of the serial disappearances case with the truth revealed to all. The Oratrice will now deliver the final verdict regarding the charges against Mr. Vache. Cool. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Varche is guilty. Guards! Take Varche away. Good. It's what he deserves. Uh, with that, the serial disappearances case is over now. We really just witnessed history. Who would have thought the true culprit would be such a polite and well-spoken guy? Yippee! We helped Navia bring the bad guy to justice! Yup. He's hurt so many innocent people and now he's finally getting what he deserves! Huh? Are you okay? <sighs> She's probably... is happy, but also sad at the same time. Demoiselle, you were absolutely brilliant. The day our late boss had always hoped for has finally come. You can rest easy now, knowing justice has been served. Mm-hmm. That huge weight is off her chest now. Yeah. Yeah. It's finally over. It's all thanks to you guys. And my partner. See, Papa? Spina di Rosula still doing well with me at the helm. Well now, hasn't this been a most delicious piece of drama? The villain has been caught, justice has been served, past wrongs have been righted, and it's a big ol' happy ending. Since it's been such a great show, I'll just let the false accusations against me slide. Either way, I've still got some business to attend to. So, if you'll excuse me... <laughs> Please wait just one moment, Mr. Tartaglia. 
Wait, what? Is he in trouble still on something else? Ugh, what now? None of this has anything to do with me. According to court protocol, since this trial was initiated due to a charge against you, a verdict must also be made regarding the initial charge before the trial can conclude. Oh, come on. Is this really necessary? Haven't you already caught the real criminal? Isn't it time for side characters like me to exit stage left? <laughs> Please respect the laws of Fontaine. This has always been the rule. All right, all right, but this sure is a lot of hassle. All I need to do is stand over there, right? Let's just get this over with. Through evidence presented in the public trial that was just held, it has been established that Mr. Tartaglia has no direct connection to the serial disappearances case. The guilty party has been identified, and thus it is logical to suppose Mr. Tartaglia is innocent of the charges. We now turn to the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinal to render the final verdict on the charges. Hmm. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Tartaglia is guilty. Wait. What? What? Hey, hey! That's not funny! Didn't you just say I'm supposed to be innocent? What's with this verdict? Is your justice machine malfunctioning? Huh? This has never happened before. The Oratrice actually returned a different verdict from the Chief Justice. Huh. I mean, have you ever heard of an innocent Fatui Harbinger? Do you think the Oratrice might have just convicted him on general principle? But weren't the charges about the serial disappearances case? No matter what else he's guilty of, it shouldn't affect the verdict in this case, right? Child has been declared guilty by the Oracle? Just what is going on here? The judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal is, by law, the final verdict of the court. We must accept the guilty verdict. But what is he guilty for? That's the question. If he's innocent on false accusation, but he's gotta be guilty of something. Guards, what does it say? please take the suspect into custody per court protocol. What? Child, whatever you're <laughs> doing, don't do something stupid. So this is how justice is done in Fontaine. What a joke. You've got your rules. Well, I've got mine too! I'm sorry. If you have been wronged, we will find the truth. But the rules of the court must be upheld. This is also the first time I've encountered such a situation. However, according to the rules established at the conception of Fontaine's court system, the Oratrice's judgment is the final verdict of the court. All I do is follow court procedure. As for why the Oratrice arrived at the conclusion it did, you should probably ask someone more knowledgeable than me. Even the Chief Jessup doesn't know. Then we have no choice but to ask the Archon herself. Uh... Why are you looking at me? I had nothing to do with it! I, I don't know what happened there either! Hey, stop staring at me! What does Lady Farina mean by that? 
She says she has no idea either? But that's impossible. Didn't she create the aura trace herself? Yeah, so are the verdicts reliable or not? Can results like this really be called justice? Uh oh. <clears throat> My dearest citizens, did you really think we'd allow an incorrect verdict to be handed out in this court? Did you really believe that the judgment could be mistaken or be the result of some sort of random mishap? Don't tell me. You thought even I had been blindsided by the Oratrice's result. But the way she looked just now, it was pretty obvious she had no idea what was going on. However, given the state of things, I shall give you an explanation. Everything that just took place, including my supposed shock and bafflement, was a part of an elaborate performance, with every action meant to stir up drama and excitement. And, <laughs> of course, for every performance there is a script. Everything has unfolded exactly as I expected from the very beginning. As the embodiment of the very concept of justice, the Oratrice shall never render an arbitrary judgment! No. If you thought Child had nothing to do with the serial disappearances case, it is only because you've been blinded by the superficial appearance of innocence. Everything he's done, not to mention the danger he poses, are beyond ordinary comprehension and completely unforgivable! All shall be revealed in time. You will come to understand my noble intentions, as well as the absolute correctness of the Oratrice's verdict. <laughs> now, having said that, although I hate to leave things hanging in suspense, it is now time for this performance to end. As the lead actress, I shall be the first to take my leave. Toodaloo! <laughs> so she chose to make her escape after all, did she? So you're saying we shouldn't put much stock into what she just said? Hmm. She probably just put on that performance to save face. As for the truth, it's unlikely that she actually has any idea. Way to pull the rug out from under her. However, please be assured that I will continue to investigate this case in a personal capacity. Just as I promised, if the judgment has been incorrect, we will do our utmost to clear his name. All right. Even though we feel pretty badly for him, we'll take your word for it for now. After all, he's done plenty of bad stuff. So he should have known he'd go to prison someday, right? True. Hey, what are you doing? Quick, stop him! Uh-oh. Is he going to try to make his one last attempt to attack us? Traveler! Hey! Traveler! Okay. Marcel! What are you doing over here? Stop resisting arrest! Cease, or we'll add another charge to the list! No, oh, no, no, wait! I, I just want to ask the Traveler something. I I'm not looking to run away. Please, please, just let me ask this one small thing. I will say go ahead, but it's up to the... the guards here if they want to let you. Go on. Oh, <gasps> yes, no for that. Thank you. Thank you. I was being led away when I finally realized something. Where did you first hear the name Vache? I erased all records of that name. So, unless... Are you still trying to prove your innocence? Give it up. You've already been convicted. Uh, really? Y y you did? You're sure? You met her? But how could that be? How did you manage to do it? It was around the fountain of Lucera. Something to do with my sensitive to the hydro element. I want to say that one, but at the same time, it could be that one. The Fountain of Lucene? 
Then, then she's been so close to me all along, and I just never... Please, please give me a chance to talk to her again. Just let the Traveler take me to the fountain to see her one last time. This is the last request I'll ever make in my life. You can do whatever you want to me afterwards. I don't care. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That was just a quick talk to her. I don't even know it will happen again. I mean, it happened the second time, but it may not happen the third time. What? Give an inch and you want to take a mile? Do you think serial killers get to make requests like that? Hey, um... Hi, Grease! Why should we give him what he wants when he's only done a ton of super terrible things? This request, is it worth as much to you as your life? Of course! Wait, no. It's worth even more than my life. Humans. Will they betray the instinct to live just to satisfy spiritual needs? Very well. I will grant your request. Your Honor, I fear that... I will go with him. You do not need to worry about any escape. <sighs> in that case, I shall leave him in your most capable hands, Chief Justice. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Is this the place? You said she's here, but what do I need to do to see her? Uh, back then, I drank the water from the Colonel of the Sea. Uh, true. It's heightened my senses to the Hydra element. Yeah, and even Paimon could hear her after drinking that thing. Didn't you just drink a lot of it on the stage as well? Vache! <gasps> ah! Yes, that's it! So you heard it too! Vinier, it's me! It's me, Vache! Vache? Vache? I'm here! I'm here! Where are you, Vinier? I'm coming for you! I'm finally here for you! Hey, wait! Be careful! Hey, wait! Vinier, is that you? It's me, Vache! Vache, why did you come? Didn't I say you don't need to look for me? You, you look a lot older than I remember. How long has it been? It's been more than 20 years. I've suffered for over 20 years since the day you left. All this time, only the thought of bringing you back has kept me alive. Nothing else mattered to me. Oh, I must be dreaming. Who would have thought I'd get the chance to tell you all of my feelings like this? Vinier, you are my everything. I really don't know how I could live without you. But Vache, if you ask me, this world would be better off without you. Uh, wh what are you saying? If not for you, I would have finished my law degree and probably become a top-tier attorney one day. If not for you, I would have continued to pursue my love of the arts, and my works would have been displayed in the Palais Mermonia itself. If not for you, I would at least have been able to take care of my mother, and she would not have grown old and died alone, with nothing but the tears on her cheeks. It's all because of your selfishness, Vache. It's all because of you. I was not expecting this. I was expecting a, like a happy reunion, but also sadness at the same time. I was not expecting this. You, wait, you are not Vignier. Who are you? You're right. I am not Vignier. I am the sacrifices. Uh-oh. Every woman who died by your hand, as our bodies dissolved, our consciousnesses flowed back to the Primordial Sea. Our thoughts circulated endlessly within the Primordial Sea, and we were no longer individuals. But we became one, just as streams of water come together in the sea. I'm Cressy. I'm Lemony. I'm Azine. The only one I am not 
is Vinier. Why? But then, where is Vinier? She doesn't want to see you anymore. Oh. Every tendril of her consciousness is avoiding you. This is what you get for your selfishness. Your selfishness robbed us of our lives and our futures. You said time and time again that you'd do any and everything for her. But did you ever consider whether she'd want to see you do the things that you did? If she would despise you for what you became? I... um... I... Mm. You are a liar, a heartless murderer, and a cowardly narcissist. The only thing you are not is Vignier's beloved. From the moment your first victim died, and her consciousness merged with Vignier's, she has had nothing but pure hatred for you. It looks like I didn't met Vasha back then either. They must have been wanting me to war back here from the very big- Oh! No! Yeah, she can't hate me. Let me see her, please. Have mercy. You still don't understand. When I said don't look for me, that came from the real Vinier. She really doesn't want to see you anymore. But on top of that, she also said that because it's her final drop of pity for you. She said that because she knew that if you did come here, we will show no mercy to you. Oh, jeez. Vashe. 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 Drown. Oh, jeez. He died. Later, the guards find the culprit of the seer disappeared on your own. <gasps> no, come on! I didn't even get to finish reading. What? What did it say? Did he die? Did he pass out and he's in a coma or? It's almost raining again.